Mrs. Laura Chinchilla, the former president of uh, Costa Rica, as a new member of the IOC Ethics uh, Commission, replacing uh, Angela Ruggiero, whose uh, term uh, will end uh, this year. Then we were even looking uh, further ahead to the future, in uh, this case, uh, to uh, the Olympic uh, Games 2032. There, uh, the IOC Executive Board uh, has uh, decided to, to propose Brisbane 2032 for election by the IOC session in Tokyo as host of the Games of the 35th Olympiad. With this uh, decision, the Executive Board was following the recommendation of the future host the Commission for the Games of the Olympiad, chaired by IOC member Christine kloster Arsen. And now it's in the hands of uh, the IOC members to uh, vote on this uh, proposal on 21st of uh, July in uh, uh, Tokyo. Brisbane uh, 2032 is the first preferred host under the new approach uh, to elections, which has been approved uh, by the IOC session in May 2019. This commission looked in depth at uh, all aspects uh, of uh, Brisbane 2032, the master venue plan, sustainability, feasibility, legacy, and highlighting uh, the impressive public support, as well as uh, the uh, strong uh, support across uh, the entire political spectrum in Australia. And with this, I would like uh, to turn over to uh, the chair of uh, this uh, commission, Mrs. Christine kloster uh, Arsen, to uh, explain to you uh, a little bit more in detail the considerations which uh, led uh, the commission to this uh, proposal. Christine, uh, you have the floor. Thank you, President. Um, it has been an enormous privilege to chair the Future Host Commission for the Games of the Olympiad through the first ever targeted dialogue. Our commission has worked closely with Brisbane 2032 and the Australian Olympic Committee through a collaborative partnership to explore how their vision, concept and legacy plans for the Olympic and Paralympic Games could align with social and economic development plans. These plans by the federal, state and city governments seek to improve the quality of life for people in Queensland, the fastest growing region in Australia, where the population is predicted to increase by 46% by 2041. The new approach to electing Olympic hosts has enabled this project to be enhanced as a part of a two-way conversation, honoring our commitment that the Olympic Games should adapt to the needs of the host and their population and not the reverse. This targeted dialogue was possible due to the years of preparatory work carried out by Brisbane 2032, as was validated by the IOC feasibility assessment, which was published in February. Building on the foundations of this assessment, we have worked intensively with Brisbane 2032 to look into the detailed aspects of their offer. This led Brisbane 2032's final submission and supporting guarantees all of which were assessed by the Future Host Commission in preparation for our meeting from the 10th to 12th of May. The project centres on delivering the best possible conditions for sport and the athletes in a sport-loving country with proven experience of hosting successful major sports events, such as the Commonwealth Games in 2018. The other strengths are outlined in the Future Host Commission report and the accompanying press release. For full transparency, the IOC has published the Commission's report as well as Brisbane 2032's final submission to the IOC's Future Host Questionnaire. We also took note of an independent report by KPMG commissioned by Brisbane 2032, which demonstrates extremely positive potential social and economic benefits of hosting the Games. This report has also been published today. The Commission is satisfied that the guarantees provided by Brisbane 2032 
are comprehensive and thorough. They demonstrate a strong support by all three levels of government and address all relevant matters. We would like to extend our gratitude to all the stakeholders who have contributed to this targeted dialogue while at the same time making their final preparations for Tokyo 2020. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Costa Arsen. Um, and just before we go to the question and answer session, and just to remind you that you need to um, click on the box, uh, the hand on the right hand box of the of the dialogue box to uh, uh, ask a question, and then we will let you into the uh, system. If I could uh, remind you to do that and then press continue. So just before we do that, I have one piece of other news just to tell you that I uh, want to inform you that the IOC Executive Board today proposed six international federations for full recognition to the IOC session next month in Tokyo. <clears throat> Just to give you the six, they are the International Cheerleading Union, ICU, International Federation of Mai Tai Associations, IFMA, International Sambo Federation, IFIAS, the International Federation of Ice Stock Sport, IFI, World Association of Kickboxing Organizations, WAKO, and World Lacrosse, WL. I think you have a full rundown of all the news from today. Uh, so let's go now to uh, questions and answers. And let's go first to Carlos Groman from Reuters. Uh, Carlos, you're up to you, please. Thank you. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Hello, how are you? Very well, thank you. Um, a question on, on Tokyo, if, if I may. Obviously, this is, this is the most burning issue at the moment. Having seen the latest news of the past week of both what you are doing and what Japan is doing, how confident are you that these games can indeed um, be successful games uh, amid this uh, negative climate of the pandemic? Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. We are in the full uh, delivery uh, phase uh, with uh, regard uh, to uh, these Olympic Games in uh, Tokyo 2020 in a uh, close uh, cooperation with uh, all uh, the, the stakeholders. And uh, there, because we are in the delivery phase, uh, I uh, uh, may ask uh, our Olympic Games Executive uh, Director uh, to uh, give you uh, uh, some more confident, uh, some more uh, information on where we are there with uh, regard to, to these uh, preparations. Uh, thank you, President, and, uh, and thank you, Carlos, for, uh, for your question. First, let me address uh, what has been done most recently on the ground, because this, I, I believe, is what gives confidence. A number of, of events were hosted in Japan, some test events, but also international ones, where a number of, of the measures were tested. And I'm making reference here to uh, our famous playbooks, whom you know e extremely well. And what is coming back from, uh, from the athletes in, in particular and their entourage is that they are very confident with the measures that have been put in place, very confident. And this is coming from the ground, from the athletes. Now, if you look at it from, from where we stand, President, on many occasions, you said that these games were the best prepared ever, and this remains the case. They have, from a baseline operations, outstanding work which has been completed, Carlos. And this goes from the venue preparation down to the very details in each of the operations. Now, the most complex factor to integrate is obviously the countermeasure operations. And here, we are uh, putting the final touch to the, to the uh, detailed policies uh, which will be published in our playbook version 3. And this is coming out uh, uh, for everyone uh, to see next week, starting with the athletes and, and the NOC's playbook. And uh, you will see that, that uh, a lot more details have been added to what was already a very detailed uh, uh, policy document published a month ago. So Carlos, when, when uh, uh, we stand where we are, a few uh, days from, from the opening ceremony, the last thing we have to do now is train the people and uh, that, that is what, what we are doing. Train for each and every scenario so that the teams have gained the confidence in order to operate, which will be a complex but very, very well-planned operations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carlos. Let's go to Australia, to Shannon Marshall McCormack from Nine Network. Shannon, if you're there, please ask your question. Hello, how are you? Uh, and 
thank you. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Obviously, this is such a huge announcement for Brisbane and Australia. This is the third Olympics that we would be uh, now hosting should the final vote go our way. What was the one key factor that really set Brisbane apart? I mean, I know it is very early in the stage for a uh, to, to choose a city to host 11 years out, but what do you think was one key factor? Was it literally looking at the pandemic and how it's playing around, around the rest of the world right now? No, it was about uh, Brisbane and Australia. Uh, it was about uh, a sports-loving uh, country. Uh, it was about uh, the, the great uh, support uh, from uh, the public and uh, from all levels of uh, government and uh, across the entire political uh, spectrum. It was a clear vision uh, for a sustainable uh, and uh, feasible Olympic uh, Games. Uh, fully aligned uh, with uh, Olympic Agenda 2020 and the Olympic Agenda 2020 uh, plus uh, uh, five. And uh, all this uh, together, I think, uh, made it uh, somehow irresistible uh, there uh, for uh, uh, the, the, the Commission as well as uh, for the Executive Board uh, today. But uh, we are not uh, there yet. Uh, you know, it's in the hand of the IOC members. Uh, uh, now to a vote on 21st of July. And obviously our really good climate, despite the fact that it's actually just 10 degrees right now in Brisbane, which is highly unusual even in winter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, climate is, uh, of course, uh, always uh, important, but uh, what is more important, you know, is uh, the, the human atmosphere and uh, their... Uh, uh, you know, we see uh, the, the Aussies uh, loving their sport and their, their athletes and cheering the athletes uh, from uh, all across uh, the globe and uh, welcoming uh, them. Uh, this is uh, more important than uh, whether it has 10 degrees or uh, 25. Thank you. Final much. question from me. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. sorry, go ahead, Shannon. Please, go ahead. I, I was just going to say a final question from me. If everything does go our way and, and it is voted our way in July, how soon do you expect uh, the Australian government, uh, the, those involved in the Olympics, to actually get started on building those new venues? Is there any requirement there to, to hit the ground running? Or because we are such a long time out from the Games, do we have time before we have to start building those things? No, this will uh, go according uh, to uh, the uh, development uh, program uh, for uh, the region, which is in place uh, anyway. Uh, there, the, the, the games as such are not uh, concerned. Uh, this uh, development uh, plan uh, is uh, there, the, the 10 plus, uh, 10 plus. Uh, there, you know, also in... Uh, in, in uh, there, the, the, the games as such are not uh, concerned. Uh, this uh, development uh, plan uh, is uh, there, the, the 10 plus, uh, 10 plus, uh, there, you know, also in, uh, in, in, in Queensland and the federal development uh, uh, program. And this uh, will go, uh, will go its, its way. And uh, then by uh, uh, 2032, uh, um, uh, the, the, the Olympic Games can benefit. Uh, from being aligned with uh, these uh, long-term development plans and this is exactly you know what uh, what we want uh, with uh, our reforms uh, that uh, um, the games uh, fit into this uh, overall uh, development plans of uh, the host thank you for your time Tom. pleasure Thank you, Shannon. Let's go, let's stay in Australia with uh, Jacqueline Magne now from The Australian. Jacqueline. Uh, hi, President Abbott. Um, good afternoon. I was just wondering, what do you say to the other cities who wanted to host the 2032 Games? Are their hopes completely dashed at this point? No, there we are in, in, in contact and the Commission uh, is in contact with all of them. So I can uh, later on uh, refer uh, to... Uh, Christine uh, close to us and again, but you know, the uh, uh, advantage of uh, this uh, uh, new approach uh, is uh, that uh, now we have uh, already for our successors uh, a pool of uh, interested uh, parties who want to organize uh, Olympic Games in uh, 36 or even uh, in, in 40. 
and uh, the Commission will continue uh, to, uh, to work uh, with them uh, in the spirit uh, of uh, this uh, new approach, uh, means uh, to assist uh, them uh, to uh, develop together a sustainable and feasible Olympic uh, project. And on this, uh, then, uh, the, uh, uh, our successors can, uh, can build on when it's time to decide they're about uh, 36 and, uh, and uh, 40. And the Commission uh, will also, you know, take uh, this uh, opportunity uh, to study uh, more in depth uh, which uh, e effect uh, their uh, climate change uh, may have on sports in general and uh, the Olympic Games uh, in uh, particular. And uh, with this, uh, you know, we, I think we, we can be extremely satisfied uh, uh, that, uh, you know, this uh, process uh, just uh, continues. Uh, we do not uh, have uh, uh, anybody against whom a decision has been, has been taken. Uh, it is uh, here uh, now a proposal in, in favor of uh, Brisbane, and uh, it is a decision in, in favor uh, to continue the dialogue with uh, uh, the other interested uh, parties, and of uh, them uh, we have uh, quite a few, uh, so uh, the, uh, the, the future of the Games uh, looks bright. Can I just ask one thing about uh, the criticism of John Coates and perhaps his position and whether there's any conflict of interest? Oh, there, uh, you know, the, this, uh, uh, we have our very strict rules in uh, the IOC and uh, these uh, rules are closely monitored uh, by uh, the, uh, our chief uh, compliance and ethics uh, officer. And as a result uh, of uh, this, uh, uh, John Coates, has uh, uh, not uh, taken part in any discussion or any decision uh, there uh, in the, the executive uh, uh, board concerning uh, uh, the, the Olympic Games uh, 2032. And this, of course, includes also uh, uh, today when his line was uh, cut, uh, when uh, we turned uh, to, uh, to, to this uh, to this uh, topic, and uh, he even then uh, came late for the next uh, topic, uh, because uh, the line had to be uh, re-established. Thank you, Jacqueline. Um, let's go to Liam Morgan from Inside the Games now. Liam, please give us your question. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Hope all is well in Lausanne. Um, quick, uh, as a sort of follow-up to Jacqueline's question, really, you would have seen there's been a lot of criticism of this process given uh, an alleged lack of transparency in choosing Brisbane. Uh, cities have been very critical of, of the approach. What, what lessons have you learned from, from this process? And can we expect future Olympic awarding to be exactly like this? Or will, or will there be changes along the way? Thank you. Well, these cities uh, are all uh, still uh, in the process and uh, they have uh, confirmed most recently, that uh, they wanted to uh, to continue this uh, dialogue, and I uh, do not think uh, that uh, uh, they would be ready to continue this uh, dialogue uh, if uh, they would be uh, so critical of uh, this uh, procedure. And it is uh, and has been from the very beginning uh, a very transparent procedure. You know, the decision about the new process has been taken in May 2019. Right after this, uh, all the NOCs of uh, the world uh, have been informed in detail uh, what uh, this new procedure uh, means and what uh, they need uh, to do and what they can do if uh, uh, they're interested. Uh, it has uh, then been uh, presented to the uh, ANOC General Assembly in 2019. Uh, then uh, uh, there, uh, uh, we had, uh, you know, a, a good number of uh, candidates, uh, many more than uh, we had in, in all the recent uh, procedures uh, before. Uh, this was also showing the appreciation. Then afterwards, uh, the uh, Commission uh, took up uh, the, the dialogue. Uh, the, uh, the Christian Klosterhausen can then maybe 
report in, in more detail and uh, they were always uh, informed about uh, the next, uh, the next uh, steps and what uh, they would need uh, to do. Uh, and uh, then the uh, reports, again, of uh, the Commission, you know, were uh, being uh, published. Already when it came to uh, the targeted dialogue, uh, they were presented to uh, the IOC session this March, and they will uh, then again go to uh, the IOC uh, session. Uh, so uh, uh, there in particular, the session, you know, is a, a part of uh, this uh, decision making uh, more uh, than uh, before, where it only came to the session with the last uh, vote. Uh, here uh, it has been presented twice and uh, with uh, all, uh, again, all the reports uh, having been uh, made uh, public. I don't know uh, whether, Christian, you, you would like to add uh, there a little bit uh, from your experience in the Commission, which I do not have. <laughs> no, th thank you very much. And uh, I would just like to echo what the President is saying. Uh, the uh, the mandate of the Commission is uh, public for everyone to see. The new approach is public for everyone to see. Uh, all the documents and the milestones have been published uh, uh, yeah, on, on the IOC website. And uh, the Future Host Commission has kept the Executive Board and the session updated while at the same time uh, uh, respecting the confidentiality of the interested parties and the dialogue they have with us. Uh, which is which is only fair. So um, so uh, and and the and the new approach is flexible and it allows the future host commission to uh, to do its work and to be transparent in everything that uh, is being decided. Thank you very much and thank you, Liam. Let's go now um, back to Australia. Tracy Holmes from ABC. Tracy, we finally got you today after our troubles yesterday. So connecting. I hope you're there. Yes, good. Please ask your question. Thanks very much for that, and um, thank you for your persistence. My question is about um, uh, Brisbane being put forward and um, the talk of legacy plans aligning, uh, the social and uh, economic plans aligning with um, that of the IOC. Can you tell me what those social and economic plans are? And um, President Bach, what is your vision of what the Olympics is going to look like in 2032? Will it just be the same as we're seeing today or will it be something quite different? Okay, let me first uh, turn uh, to uh, Christine Kloster-Ars and to uh, answer your first uh, question. And uh, then, uh, if I may, I'm, I'm coming back uh, to, your, to your second uh, question. That's fine for you? Yeah, thanks. Okay, Christine. Oh, Thank you. Uh, the, the, the beauty of, of the new approach is uh, actually what you are asking is to be able to align the, uh, the, uh, the development plans of the, of the future host with, uh, with the concept of the games in which they uh, plan the, the, the concept of the games depending on what their own development plans are. So it is very much a two-way conversation and then trying to align each other's ambition and uh, plans with, uh, with each other. And that has been a most fruitful exercise because uh, it's it's not like the saying you have to do it this way or that way. It is trying to collaborate in a way that the games concept will actually reflect and echo the uh, the development plans of the future host. Now, with regard to uh, your uh, to your uh, second question, and of the I, my my wish is uh, that uh, the the Olympic Games keep uh, their, their core mission. And uh, this is uh, the universality and uh, the unity in all our diversity uh, so uh, that uh, uh, you will uh, still see the entire world uh, coming together for these uh, Olympic Games and uh, everybody being equal and respecting uh, the same rules. Uh, when it comes uh, then to, to other issues, uh, there will be a a very different interpretation of uh, uh, the the Olympic uh, values of uh, the uh, Olympic uh, program. There, I'm I'm sure that uh, uh, you know uh, our successors uh, they will have uh, their own their own uh, view uh, when it comes uh, to uh, to to the sports uh, program. Uh, when it comes uh, to uh, uh, then. Uh, 
uh, to uh, also have, uh, uh, you know, uh, the e-sports, uh, but uh, with, uh, I hope, uh, with the physical activity, uh, uh, the ones, uh, this will have been uh, much uh, further developed uh, than uh, thanks uh, to, to the new technologies available at the time, uh, in particular with regard to a virtual uh, uh, reality. Uh, it uh, uh, may be also a, a different uh, uh, approach uh, there with uh, uh, regard uh, to uh, the, the, the qualification uh, uh, systems and, and, and so on. But this is you know, uh, already very technical and uh, there I would not like to go into to detail. Uh, I want to leave uh, my successor uh, there also, you know, a lot of room uh, for their vision and their uh, 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 fantasy. But uh, again, uh, I hope and I'm confident, uh, in particular also, you know, with this uh, decision today, uh, that uh, this uh, appreciation of uh, universal uh, sport and uh, this uh, coming together at uh, one place uh, to, to celebrate uh, this uh, unity in, in all our diversity uh, with and through and uh, in sport, uh, that uh, this uh, remains uh, the same because this is uh, the mission of the Games at the end. Thank you very much, okay. Tracy. Thank you, President. Let's go now to uh, Associated Press, Graham Dunbar from AP. Graham? Hello. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's not very good. Um, hello. I hope I'm unmuted now. Um, a, a question, not about Tokyo or Brisbane, but the um, the European sports model. Um, it was said um, at the ASWAF meeting this week, uh, Mr. Bath, you've been very active in uh, lobbying with EU commissioners. The um, in the, this in the context of the uh, the football club's case against UEFA, the European Super League. What do you see? as the, the risks posed by that case um, to all the IFs. Um, would you make a submit, do you, does the IFC plan to make a submission to the European Court in Luxembourg where this is probably going to be decided? And when there is a quite a lot of overlap between the Italian Olympic family and the ownership of Juventus, is there any way of trying to have influence there to try to pull them back from, you know, what shaping is it like a nuclear option? Well, we have been in uh, contact uh, there all the time with a number of uh, uh, European uh, governments. Uh, and I uh, also recently uh, uh, paid a visit uh, to uh, the EU Commission in uh, Brussels. And uh, there, the uh, European sport model uh, was uh, always uh, on the top of uh, the agenda, even before uh, the uh, question uh, uh, came up again. Uh, very prominently uh, through uh, this uh, Super League uh, uh, efforts. And uh, we will continue uh, there, uh, these uh, contacts. Uh, there are uh, the upcoming Slovenian uh, presidency of uh, the European Union uh, will uh, uh, prepare uh, uh, EU working paper on uh, sport and uh, there uh, this uh, European sports model will hopefully uh, play an important uh, role. Uh, this is uh, now in the hands of uh, the, the, the different uh, governments. Uh, but uh, we have uh, seen uh, there in this discussion around uh, the Super League uh, that uh, a number of them have uh, already uh, uh, spoken up uh, uh, in favor of uh, this uh, model. Uh, which means, uh, you know, as a, a values-based organization of uh, uh, sport with uh, uh, volunteers, uh, with uh, open uh, competition, means, uh, you know, uh, uh, with uh, relegation uh, and not a mere franchise uh, system, and uh, means a solidarity-based uh, sport organization, which allows uh, to... Uh, uh, support, uh, also a sport on the grassroots, uh, which allows uh, to build uh, future generations uh, of uh, uh, athletes and uh, which allows uh, to uh, sport remaining a real mass uh, movement uh, 
contributing uh, through this uh, to uh, the mental and physical health uh, of uh, the population and in this respect uh, in particular of uh, the European population. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, President. Let's go now to uh, sport in, oh no, let's go to Gerard Farek. Still got a few, a few to get through. We're probably coming towards the end now, just to warn you. We're trying to get to as many different people today as possible. Let's go to Gerard Farek from Around the Rings, please. Gerard. Hello, thank you uh, for taking my question. Um, today I saw uh, that uh, Tokyo 2020 said that uh, President Bach, you will not be coming in June, but you would be coming just uh, ahead of the games. Uh, what were some of the factors for that decision? And uh, when are you going to arrive in uh, Tokyo? Oh, this uh, has been discussed uh, with uh, the, the Tokyo 2020, uh, whether it uh, would really make sense uh, to, uh, to go uh, back and forth. Uh, there, you know, now uh, going uh, to uh, to Tokyo, having to respect uh, the, the quarantine, uh, then uh, being there for a couple of hours, uh, and uh, then uh, going back again, and then after two weeks, maybe uh, uh, going again, uh, again having to respect uh, uh, quarantine according to the to the playbooks. Uh, so. Uh, we uh, we came uh, to uh, the conclusion uh, that uh, uh, it uh, would be better that I arrive uh, mid of July uh, than uh, to uh, uh, to Tokyo uh, in time for uh, uh, the the games and also all the the preceding uh, uh, meetings and uh, visits and uh, organizational uh, uh, issues. Thank you very much, uh, Farak. Let's go to Sport Intern and Asish Sharma. Asish, your question. Uh, hi. Uh, uh, hello, Thomas. Thank you very much for uh, taking my question. Um, it's a bit of a personal question, actually. We talk a lot about uh, athletes and, and how they prepare. Um, how about you yourself? At what point did you begin to get nervous, excited? looking forward to the, the, the start of the Olympics. And is it going to be even more of a, a, a nervous thing for you because of the circumstances behind these Olympics with, with the COVID-19 and all the various uh, different uh, protocols that we have, which are, are making a completely different Olympics? Are you beginning to feel that sense of excitement building up inside you as we get nearer to the Olympics already? Uh, yes, I do. And, uh, you know, I think I, I can feel with the athletes and for, for, for the athletes, uh, the most important is uh, that uh, the Olympic uh, Games are taking place and uh, that uh, they can have uh, their uh, Olympic uh, competition. And this is uh, what uh, we, are, we are concentrating on and have been concentrating uh, on uh, there uh, all the time. Uh, and uh, uh, the athletes, and they have made this uh, very clear you know, in the uh, in the International Athletes uh, Forum, uh, that uh, they accept and respect uh, these uh, restrictions. Uh, we all uh, will have uh, to 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 face, uh, but in the end, you know, it's about uh, their competition, uh, their uh, determination, uh, and uh, their reward uh, for uh, uh, working. Uh, not only for four years for most of them, but for, for many more years uh, to prepare for this, uh, for most of them, a once in a lifetime opportunity taking part in uh, the Olympic uh, Games. And having felt this, uh, you know, with, with them, there you, you can also see uh, this uh, excitement and uh, anticipation and uh, this uh, also uh, helped and encouraged me uh, to uh, to feel the same and to feel with them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's last, probably last two questions now. Let's go to uh, gamesbid.com. Robert Livingston, please. Robert. Uh, hello, Mr. President. Um, there's been a lot of urgency, obviously, around uh, 2032. We've heard a lot about that. But um, um, we haven't heard much from the Future Host Commission uh, winter games for 2030, which is two years sooner, even though about a year and a half or two years ago, there seemed to be imminent, there's a lot of discussion around it. 
So what's happened? Uh, why haven't we heard? And why is there a different level of urgency around those games? No, they are they are working uh, and uh, are in uh, in in dialogue. Uh, there again with a number of uh, interested uh, parties, and I I trust uh, that uh, once uh, uh, they uh, uh, have uh, to tell something to the IOC executive board, uh, that then uh, they they will uh, they will come uh, and uh, have a look uh, uh, then at uh, the the Olympic Winter Games uh, 2030, but. There we are not in a we are not in a hurry. Uh, uh, you know we are still uh, nine years ahead of uh, these uh, winter games, so uh, it's work in progress. And let's see when uh, when they will come up with something. In due. But why is it different level of urgency? Um, you know, you say there's nine years for the winter games, but there's eleven years for. Summer games. No, it's not a. It's not a question of. Uh, not a question of urgency. It's a more a question of opportunity, uh, and uh, this is what uh, this uh, new procedure uh, uh, is uh, is about. And uh, you know, you you uh, also know uh, that. Uh, uh, I don't know whether I should say this, uh, but uh, you know, uh, organizing uh, winter games. Uh, is uh, somehow more complex uh, than organizing uh, summer games uh, because uh, you know uh, pools, uh, swimming pools, Olympic size uh, are uh, available uh, uh, almost all across the globe or all across the globe, uh, but uh, there are not so many mountains uh, uh, where you can organize a, a, a downhill. Uh, so uh, some of these uh, needs, uh, you know, a close uh, study and uh, and uh, having a look uh, into it, and uh, there, you know, it's a uh, diligence uh, before uh, before speed. Uh, we are not in a hurry. Thank you very much. It seems appropriate that we would take our last question back to Australia and uh, Chip Legrand from the Age. Chip, if you're there, please ask your question. Oh, thank you. Um, and hello, uh, Mr. Bach. Look, as you'd appreciate, people in Australia are going to wake up to this news in a, in a few hours. Uh, so I think it's important that we that we get it right in terms of trying to explain exactly where things sit now. So you've got a situation where the where the, the members of the IOC will are being asked to vote on something, but Brisbane is the only choice that they're being given. So can you foresee any circumstances in which the members of the IOC wouldn't support Brisbane as the host city for 2032? Or is this now rightly understood as a done deal? I will never speculate on outcomes uh, of uh, e elections, uh, neither in the IOC nor elsewhere. Uh, this uh, decision is now in the hands of uh, the members. Uh, they have uh, all uh, uh, the, the necessary arguments, documentation. Uh, they have uh, the uh, recommendation of uh, the IOC Executive Board and of the future uh, host uh, commission. And uh, they will, uh, in between, uh, also have uh, uh, the opportunity uh, to uh, uh, discuss uh, the technical uh, details and ask uh, questions in, uh, in, a, in a telephone uh, conference, uh, still in the month of uh, June. And afterwards, it's about uh, 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 voting. Uh, there, let's see, the vote uh, in the Commission, so much I can say, the vote in the Commission and the vote in the Executive Board uh, was uh, uh, very clear. Well, I, I guess the other way of asking this would be, if they don't vote for Brisbane, what happens then? Uh, I, uh, you, you, can, you can try uh, through many different ways. You, know? uh, you will not uh, lead me into speculation on the outcome uh, of uh, of uh, these uh, e elections, and uh, I'm uh, very confident uh, that uh, in 2032 uh, we will have uh, great Olympic Games. Thank you very much, Chip. I think that's a good way to end uh, the press conference today. I'd like to thank the president. I'd like, uh, of course, uh, also to thank uh, Christine Costa Arsen and uh, and Christoph Duby. Um, I've just been reminded that our next press conference will be in Tokyo on the 17th of July. So we look forward to hosting you then and there and seeing some of you hopefully soon, soon around that uh, event. 
Uh, otherwise, thank you very much indeed, and apologies for those we couldn't get to today. I think we, a third press conference in a row, I think we got to, through quite a few questions, so apologies to a few we couldn't get to, but I think we covered most subjects. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Thank you very much, and uh, see you in Tokyo or see you from Tokyo. Recording has stopped.